Welcome to a tour of my laptop. So we're gonna get right into it, no intro today. You might think that the first thing I'm gonna show you is my desktop and how that's organized. The thing is, I don't really ever see my desktop because I feel like there are 700 different screens and apps covering it up. And so instead of having any cute setup here that I can show off to you, it is a mess. It's just a dumping ground. Um, I do have one of the Mac default wallpapers selected, which is cute on the rare occasion that I managed to actually uncover my desktop and see what is on here. Really the first thing that I wanted to show you was my web browser because that is where I spend most of my time on my computer. I do use Google Chrome. I don't know, maybe Safari is a good alternative. I just have literally no desire to try it because Google Chrome is fantastic as is Gmail and Google Drive and basically Google owns all of my personal data and I guess I'm okay with that. I feel like I should turn so that you can see my face a little more. Scoochie, scoochie, scooch. So, one of the nice things that you can do in Google Chrome is you can set up the tabs that open on startup. So every time that you launch Google Chrome, what websites automatically open? So for me, that is To Do, which is my to-do list app, and Identity. So Identity is actually the sponsor of today's video. Um, so basically, instead of being overwhelmed and distracted by the entirety of the internet, like when you just open up a new tab and you have this address bar that can take you literally anywhere. Ooh, okay, I don't have anything embarrassing in the search history, that's good. Instead of being overwhelmed by the internet, with identity, you create tiles and you basically declutter the internet. So of course, I'm a fan of that. So you can either search for your tiles or you can organize them by category. So the categories that I have are affiliate, because um, I always forget the websites that I have to go to to check how my affiliate links are doing, so I just collected them all here. I have a finances tab for all the money stuff. Um, this is really helpful because there were certain websites that I could never remember how to get to. And then I have messaging, personal, school, shopping, social media, and work. That one has a lot of stuff. Identity also keeps track of your passwords, so when you click on a tile, it automatically copies a password to your clipboard, and then you just go, okay, so my stuff fills in, but if it weren't in there, you could copy in the password right from the clipboard and just sign in very easily. Because the idea is to just have this one tab open rather than having the millions of tabs open that most of us are used to, you can even integrate um, your Google Calendar into the sidebar here. So there's not really anything on the calendar for today, but tomorrow is more interesting. Tomorrow I'm leaving for New York. And so you can see the meetings and the events and appointments that you have coming up. You can also make notes and lists. So for example, you might make your to-do list for the day right in identity so I really like using this because it simplifies a lot of my routines so for example if I'm sitting down to review my budget and look at my finances and do all the adulting things I have everything I need in one place and I don't need to keep track of in my head which websites I need to visit so you can use the link in the description to give identity a try and we are going to move on to the next section of this tour. I do have a few Chrome extensions that I use, so I shall now tell you about each of those. Honey, you've probably seen YouTube ads for it before. It finds you coupon codes for the websites that you're shopping on, and in my experience, works pretty well. Loom is a tool that allows you to create screen recordings. And the cool part is that it also records using the camera on the front of your computer and it records just like a little circle with your face in it. Pause is a fantastic extension. Let me show you how that works. Anytime that you visit a distracting website, um, so I think that includes all social media websites but also some news websites because I think Reading the news can also become a little bit of a rabbit hole. So anytime you visit those websites, it makes you wait, I think five seconds before you can actually continue on to the website. There is an option if you wait like two extra seconds or something to actually click don't pause this website for 24 hours. 
but it's surprisingly effective. Like even though you literally only have to wait two seconds, a lot of the times I just give up on waiting and I just go with this first option. The Pinterest save button just lets you save any image that you find on the internet to a Pinterest board. Video speed controller, I think I downloaded this to speed up K-dramas because sometimes I get very frustrated with the slow pacing. I remember when I watched Startup, for some reason I was very frustrated with the pacing of that one. So the entire thing I watched at 1.25 if not 1.5 speed and you still get the storyline it's still you still get the whole experience teleparty is for watching netflix with other people um block the youtube feed does exactly what it says it does so as you can see when i open up youtube I don't really have any sort of home feed. This is fantastic. It makes a really big difference. So all you have access to is the channels that you're subscribed to basically, and then just the search bar. Okay, what is left? History by date. I think I downloaded that because when you look at your history on Chrome, you have to scroll all the way back. So like if you wanna see a website that you visited a week ago, you would have to scroll through your entire history for the past seven days. I don't remember why I needed to find something so specific but I really needed to. So I got this extension and it works great. Okay, so that's my web browser. Let's look at the stuff that I have in my dock. Uh, so first of all, I have Finder, Spotify, QuickTime, just the basics. I rarely use Spotify on my computer. If I do, it's probably to listen to white noise. QuickTime Player, the reason I have that in my dock is because that's what I use to record screen recordings as I'm actually doing right now. Wow. Wow. Uh, Final Cut Pro is where all of the video editing magic happens. I actually have a 30 minute video that is just a complete guide, a tutorial to how I edit in Final Cut Pro. I made it like a year ago, so some of the information might have changed, but I cover everything, I think, from how I organize files to how I make the initial edits to color grading, designing graphics, effects that I apply, everything. Day one is a lovely little journaling app. So I have the app on my phone, but I usually type my entries out on my computer because I can type a lot faster on a keyboard than on my phone. Um, so usually each evening what I do is I go new from template and I have this daily evening template that includes um, a title, three wins from that day, and then three things I was grateful for. And then once I finish it on my computer, it syncs very quickly to my phone. So I just pick up my phone and I add a couple of photos from the day. Photoshop is the app that I use for designing thumbnails, designing graphics, uh, doing the little hand-drawn illustrations for my videos. iCal is my preferred calendar app. So I do use Google Calendar because Google Calendar is nice for inviting people to events. That, that's what I will give it. Otherwise, I hate the design of Google Calendar. I think iCal is absolutely beautiful and simple and fantastic. So my Google Calendar and my iCal are synced. Any edit that I make to each of them shows up on both of them. So generally throughout the day to check my calendar, I'm always using iCal. Notion is what me and my assistant use to stay organized with the content calendar. I really don't wanna show you too much of this, but basically the content calendar is divided into separate pages where if I click on Instagram, I can see just the content that is going up on Instagram. We have pages for different projects. We have pages for content ideas. There's a knowledge base with all sorts of tutorials for how to do all the Blissbean related work. I am planning on doing a full Notion tour, so that is just a little taste for you right now. Here we have Slack. I don't use Slack all that much, and also this won't be very helpful because literally everything will be blurred out. But I did start using Slack recently because the uh, influencer agency, something that I started working with recently, they use that for communication. So I want to make sure that I have easy access to it. The Notes app, I absolutely love the Notes app. So I used to do a lot of stuff in Google Drive, but now I'm finding it easier to keep everything in Apple Notes. So in Apple Notes, I have a folder for an archive. So for example, I have, um, my 2021 mid-year review in here. I have a folder that is for anything that I'm working on currently. So for the time being, that is just my New York City packing list, which I will be using literally this evening because I am leaving literally at 1 a.m. I have some old book notes that I still need to move into Obsidian and I will do that eventually. Some old dream journal entries that I want to transfer into day one. Also, eventually, I just haven't gotten around to it. Personal has a bunch of different lists like 
um, things to do with friends, movies and shows that I want to watch, gift ideas, etc. Planning has all of my little different routines, morning routine, bedtime, weekly planning, midweek planning, monthly planning, things I want to do someday. Lots, lots and lots of that stuff. I probably have a video for almost every routine in here if you're interested in that. And then just two recipes in here. The last thing I have in my doc is Apple stickies. So I love using post-it notes in real life and Apple stickies is like the digital version of that. It's just as simple as you can get when it comes to note-taking apps. It just creates these sticky notes that you can then move around your desktop. So the ones that I have at the moment are a brain dump and I actually just cleared this so that is why it is nice and empty. I have one for stuff that just popped into my head that I want to share on social media so that I am not tempted to immediately go on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Uh, this is a little list of things that I do whenever I am promoting a new video. And then sometimes I just need a place to write something in the moment. So for example, uh, I recently recorded a podcast episode and I needed to think of my three takeaways. There aren't that many different settings. You can make them different colors. Um, you can make them, let's see. You can make them translucent if that floats your boat, but I feel like it's a little bit hard to read. Finally, let's talk about my folder organization. So, as I said, I don't really use my desktop. My desktop is just a dumping ground for screen recordings and screenshots that I try to clear out once a week. Uh, downloads folder is the same thing. And I actually don't use the documents folder that much either because most of my documents are organized onto my hard drive. So I think most of the folders that I have in here are folders that are just like automatically created by Adobe. So these are folders that I'm afraid to delete because I'm pretty sure they are critical to the functioning of these softwares. So most of my files are on these external drives that I have. So this one that I am plugging in now is the Samsung portable, uh, how much is it? I think it's, yeah, 500 gigabyte SSD, solid state drive. So I use this for any temporary projects and my naming convention is generally the platform, the date in the format year, month, day, and then just the title of the video or the podcast or whatever it was. So for example, I have YouTube 2021, June 11th, speaking in Spanish for a day, and you know exactly what that is. Um, and then when I sort by name, which I always sort my folders by name, all of the YouTube videos will be grouped together. Um, then they'll be sorted by date and then you can very easily reference the name of the video. So it's very nice and organized. These folders up here are to help me organize anything that does not really belong to a specific project. So when I import stuff from an SD card, I will usually dump all of the unedited photos in here. And then once they're edited, they get exported to here. If I have video clips that I shot specifically for a video that will be way in the future and I'm not currently working on it at all, but I need to organize it, um, I'll put it in this folder. And then any videos that just belong somewhere else, but for the time being, they just need to be gathered somewhere. I put them in the video dump. Now the hard drive that I use, this is an uh, easy store, four terabyte external hard drive. Once I am done with the project, I move it off the Samsung drive onto the external hard drive for permanent storage. So the folders that are by far the most bloated on here are the blogging and the other footage. So the blogging folder is organized by every single month basically that I've been using this organization system. Let us click on an example month. So for example, if we go to February 2021, I see all of the podcast episodes I did that month, all of the videos, all of the graphics that I designed for newsletters and all of all one photo that I edited for Instagram. So if I open up the folder for a specific video, what you'll see is all of the graphics that I designed have a zero in front of them so that they're really easy to access. As I said, I sort everything by name. And so anytime I put a zero in front of a file name, it will always show up at the beginning of the folder. And then after that is all of the B-roll that I decided might be useful for future videos and I just named it with different keywords so that I'd be able to find it in the future. And then the other big folder that I mentioned is for other footage. So 
The way that I used to use this folder, as you can see down here, is I would just make a folder for a specific event that happened. Now, because I'm really trying to record more of my daily life, I make a folder for every single month, and in that folder I put all the footage that I captured with my phone, with my little Canon camera, whatever, just footage that is of my life that wasn't filmed for a specific YouTube video. Here, again, I name everything with keywords so that in the future I can find it a lot more easily. Um, let's say I remember that I watched a solar eclipse. All I have to do is just go to my hard drive. Um, I would probably go into this folder and search solar eclipse. It does take a lot of effort, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty tedious to go through everything, watch enough of it to figure out what's going on in the clip, and so, this is something that I try to do every week, but lately I've been slacking a little bit. However, I do think the effort is worth it because it makes editing future videos so much easier and so much more fun because as long as you have an idea in your head of what sort of clip you're looking for, you just type in a keyword and then you discover all of this footage that you might have forgotten about. And I don't know, maybe I'm just a file organization nerd, but I think that is pretty freaking cool. I would say the last important folder that I have is for video and design projects. So this is stuff that I've done freelance or personal projects. As I mentioned, I do try to go through my footage and apply keywords to it and everything, clear my desktop, clear my downloads folder, etc. every week. However, that's been happening more like once a month lately, but when I do keep up with it, it is so, so nice to just have everything in the place that it belongs. Um, it's also very important when you have multiple hard drives and very important files to have a consistent system for backing things up. So I showed you that the projects from this temporary uh, solid state drive get backed up to this permanent external hard drive. However, I also have another external hard drive that is just a backup of this one and I need to make sure that also happens on a regular basis because if I were to lose everything in here, that would be tragic, let's just say that. The last thing to show you in terms of file organization is that recently, um, two months ago, I started working with my assistant and so we set up an iCloud folder to share all the stuff that she needs access to. The really nice thing was that I was already super organized with all of my files and so I didn't have to do that much in order to set it up in a way that made sense to her. All I had to do for the most part was just share those files with her and the way that we decided to do that because we both use Apple computers was just to use an iCloud folder. So I don't remember which storage plan I ended up purchasing. I think it's like a couple hundred gigabytes, but it's been working pretty nicely so far. First of all, I have tons of B-roll footage on my hard drive, but what I've been doing for her is pulling the best footage and compiling it in this footage library that she has access to whenever she's editing a video. So the only annoying thing about this is that it doesn't show the preview of the video if it's not like downloaded to your computer. So if anyone has tips for working with iCloud folders, I would very much appreciate that. But for the time being, it does look like iCloud is a pretty good solution. The resources folder, I'm super proud of this because this is so well organized. Um, this has everything, all the worksheets that I've designed and the graphics for those worksheets. Um, when one of us is editing a video, for example, there is stuff for the sound, the visuals. Um, for example, you might go into the overlays and then you'd have access to all these overlays that we sometimes use. It is just, it's a pleasure to use if I may toot my own horn. And then finally, once again, we just have a project folder for every piece of content that she's involved in. I didn't think I had that much to talk about because I thought my organization system was not that special, but once you get into the web browser, the extensions, the apps, the software, the file organization, it's a lot, but it really goes a long way to making your work processes more streamlined and more efficient. So I highly recommend figuring out an organization system. Um, I think a great example of why this comes in handy is that when I started working with my assistant, 
Everything was already organized for her and it was very easy for me to just show her how to use the organization systems that I had already set up and been using for years. So yeah, please organize your files in a consistent way because your future self will be very grateful. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications and I'll see you next week. Bye.